It may have a strange name, but this little weirdo of a brush packs a big creative wallop. It acts and plays very differently from any other brush in my arsenal. So here are a few reasons that this brush might need to make an appearance on your painting table. If you like a bit of control, predictability, and texture in your watercolor, then this brush will make you sing. I mean, not literally, but maybe. So to get acquainted with the cat's tongue brush, paint some drills along with me. I know, I know, it sounds so fun, but I promise you, they are a little fun and we'll wrap up with a more traditional painting soon. So you'll have something to look forward to. I'm using scrap paper for this one, my Art for Joystick journal, and of course, the cat's tongue brush. The cat's tongue brush is kind of a distant cousin of the dagger, except the point is in the middle, except being off to one side, like the dagger. You're not gonna see as much of a bounce with the cat's tongue brush. It's definitely more rigid, especially in the smaller sizes. So let's get to it. You're gonna load that brush up with your favorite color. I don't care what it is. And you're going to press and lift, press and lift. I'm holding my brush at a slight angle to the paper and I'm holding it about a third of a weight down on the handle. And I'm literally just press and lifting. The broad side of the brush, the thickest part, is facing down. And I'm gonna repeat that again and again. And now I'm doing the same thing, press and lift with the skinny side of the brush facing down on the page. I'm not using the point. I'm using the entire skinny edge of the brush to create these little marks. Love this. Look at how controlled you can get such even consistent marks with this kind of repetition. This brush gives you tremendous, tremendous control because the bristle configuration makes the bristles a bit more rigid. And so you get that control, which gives you consistency and gives you the ability to repeat brush strokes very easily. Now you're gonna hold your brush perpendicular to the page like a T and you're going to press and lift. And yes, you are using the tip of your brush this time. Dab and lift, dab and lift. You can vary your pressure, do a couple different rows where your dab is very soft. Maybe your dab is super hard, see what happens. And yeah, it's good fun. Imagine using this texture in the center of flowers or shrubbery in a landscape, love it. All right, moving on, filling your brush with your favorite color and just do some serpentine type curves with a medium pressure. And I want you to do them over and over again and try to make them as similar to one another as possible. Load that brush up again and we're going to press and wiggle this time. Press, wiggle, lift, press, wiggle, lift. And what I love about this is where the paint collects towards the tip of the brush, depending on how much paint you have on your brush. These could be instant berries, instant little pods. These put next to each other very closely, almost touching, could become greenery in a distant landscape. Love, love, love. Fill up your brush again. You can play around with any of these strokes with different levels of water and pigment on your brush to see what happens. Using the very, very tip of your brush and a very light touch, I want you to do repeated squiggles over and over. See how thin you can get that mark and how consistently thin you can get that mark to be over and over. Load up again and you're gonna press, drag, and lift. Press, drag, and lift. You're dragging for about a half inch. Press, drag, and lift. And again, try for consistency. Also, you can try, see what happens as you let your brush run out of paint. These drills are so important for developing muscle memory. Muscle memory is really the heart and soul of what we do with watercolor. It's what allows us to get into that joy zone where we're not worrying about all the things, how we're holding our brush. It's where your body starts to remember what it's supposed to do and when. So these drills are going to improve that muscle memory for you. This one, we are pressing and then quickly swiping up. Press, swipe up, press, swipe up. 
you can change this up, change the color on your brush. And again, I highly recommend doing several rows of these with different levels of paint on your brush to see how the mark changes. All right, this one again, we're holding the brush perpendicular to the paper and we're making C's, basic C's. And I'd like to see you make these C's with a consistent thickness. So paying attention to the pressure on your brush, paying attention to the level of paint on your brush. And of course you could do another row that's much lighter, but I think it's fun to try to get each one to be super consistent. And that's going to help you be even better understand how much water and when you need to reload. You're gonna better understand those two combination of factors that are so important on this painting journey. And then let's just make a big, long, undulating horizontal line with as little of a quiver as possible. And this one is pressure and lift off, pressure and not, pressure and lift off. And you could fill a whole page with these horizontal lines so good. I often grab for my cat's tongue when I feel like I'm trying to make a shape or a mark and the brush I'm using is requiring way too many brush strokes. And then I pull out the cat's tongue and I can make the mark in one or two movements. So I use it a lot for filler greenery and simple filler flowers like these. I'll also start with a cat's tongue brush when I think I might go a little bit more realistic with my paintings and I want that control and that calm that the cat's tongue gives me versus using a bigger dagger brush or a big bouncy splashy round brush to start like here with these delphiniums that I'm mapping out. I also tend to reach for the cat's tongue when I feel like I want a little more structure in my painting and I want to attain that structure a lot easier. The cat's tongue, especially in the smaller sizes, feels a little bit stiffer and almost like it's resisting you from the page a little bit. And that can come in handy when you're trying to make some interesting angles. Now, I promised we would paint and paint we shall. But before we do, let me know in comments. Do you have a cat's tongue brush? Do you use it and love it? Have you not tried it yet? Are you scared of it? Let's just get it all out and get the conversation going. All right, so I'm just gonna start with a press and lift with the peach, my favorite peach from my watercolor palette. I'm gonna go around an invisible center, press and lift, press and lift. Notice I'm changing the angle of my hand so that the point or the tip of the brush is always facing out. And perpendicular hold here on the brush right now and dabbing in some simple shapes, simple dots and dabs to create the center of the flower and then just pushing back on those a little bit as they're bleeding into my petals a little too much. Grab your favorite green. I'm mixing a little bit of an emerald green and a tan for a creamy kind of muted green. Added a little bit of pink to my brush without rinsing and I did a press, long drag and twisty wiggle to get those long thin leaves and I think they're pretty cool and I'm actually surprised I was able to get something so lyrical looking with the cat's tongue but it definitely worked so if you're not familiar with the whole press drag and lift that I just mentioned and no I didn't say press dragon I promise you check the link below it's a really cool technique that helps you create so many different leaves super easily rinse my brush and I'm going into my yellow with a little bit of red and doing a few dabs one bigger dab in the middle with two smaller on either side and then rinsing my brush to pick up that creamy green again holding my brush perpendicular to create some thin 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 stems that connect all three of those yellow flowers and then a few press and lift for a few small leaves. This brush just really lends itself to either less realistic, like folk art type of one stroke stuff, or it really works well to map out a more realistic painting in the base layers. And you can even create beautiful roses with this brush. It still has enough spring and flexibility in the bristles to make a difference when you press harder or not press hard at all. You're gonna get a difference in the stroke. You're gonna get thicker strokes, thinner strokes. You're just not gonna see as much of a variety based on how hard you press compared to say the dagger or a round brush and especially a dagger or a round that has natural bristles versus synthetic. 
and just a few press and lift, press and lift in descending sizes on either side of an invisible line gives you a little fern-like leaf spray. I love, and I mean love, it's probably the word I overuse most on this channel, creating vines with the cat's tongue brush. If you only ever create vines with this brush, it'll still be well worth it. Now try to ignore the haphazard composition of what I'm painting here because it's not about the composition. It's just about testing this brush out and showing you what it can do. So we're doing a longer drag here with a few thinner lines in between creating a flower that's kind of a side view, maybe almost a three quarter view. And then again, flexing our thin brush stroke muscle with the cat's tongue. It is fully capable of creating the most lovely, delicate, thin strokes. Just keep your eye on that pressure. And then a press that is a little bit more wiggly. So I pressed down and really wiggled that brush as I went to the base of the stroke, added a few smaller strokes next door, and before you know it, you have a little rosebud. Obviously, I'm focusing on florals today. I mean, when do I not focus on florals? Let's be honest. I do love my landscapes, and this brush can do justice to landscapes like you could only dream a lot a lot of places for this brush in landscapes a lot of texture building imagine the foreground the fields imagine water and the waves that start happening in a lake on a windy day you could make those marks with this brush beautifully let's get into it though let's be honest vines this brush is a show off when it comes to vines thin lines here down on the bottom right and then press and lift, press and lift, no drag, and then a little bit more press, drag, and lift, a curved drag, and before you know it, we're creating some eucalyptus. It's just effortless. It's less is more with this brush sometimes. Sometimes this brush for me shows off in the less is more areas. It doesn't take too much of a stroke. You don't have to overwork a shape to get it to be convincing with this brush. All right, can I get a heck yes for those that are super inspired by the greenery that's happening with this brush. Go ahead into comments, let me know how excited you are. And while you're at it, give this video a boop, that's a like. And honestly, friends, if you're new here, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And I would recommend to subscribe or at least hit that bell button so that you don't miss any of my new videos. Now, I've told you that these brush drills are so important. So I'm gonna send you to a playlist where we do drills with a bunch of other brushes you don't wanna miss. Watch those next. And until next time, when we meet again, I bid you happy painting.